For the residents that are coming up here are the people that are on Calpe Ward at the moment at the hospital. So they're part of our elderly residential services set up, but at the moment they're based at a ward in the hospital. So the aim is to move them away from the hospital to a more protective area, and we're running the same setup from here. We're using the building from here to look after the residents that would normally have been in our care anyway. Now, this um, facility is not tailor-made for the service, to provide services to these elderly patients. So what are some of the challenges you have identified and need to overcome in order to provide the same quality, the same standard of care? Okay, well we need to make sure that the facility obviously wasn't designed for that, but as you can see now, um, it's, it's working as best as we can from there. We need to make sure that the residents feel at home, we need to make sure they're safe. We need to make sure we've got the curtains, we need to make sure we have the appropriate space, and obviously we need to be able to provide the day-to-day -day running of um, eating, drinking, the, the, bathing, the normal things that we would do from there. So we've had to work very, very quickly with a really good team to make sure we get the facilities in place, but I think we're, we're, we're almost there. So, what number of patients is transferring to the facility. Okay, so we've got a facility over the three floors and we're moving up 26 residents to come within this area that we've got. So it's set over three floors, so we've also had to adjust the staffing. The uh, government is taking very seriously about this condition and we all know that our frail elderly are the most at risk. So as far as I can say, there has not been any difficulty in getting any extra staff or any extra equipment that is required. For example, this facility, which is not built for purpose, it will by automatically increase the number of carers and nurses due to the layout of the building. So the same patient will, will need more carers and nurses because of, the, because of the building. Where are you in terms of resourcing, of equipment, of materials? I see beds. I'm assuming these are extra beds. Where do they come from? Well, I think we've been lucky um, and in, in the sense that there, were, there was a plan to uh, do an upgrade on the second floor of Mount Avernia. And the bed you can see now was the donation by GATS, which were the, uh, at the moment were in a warehouse. So that gives us the possibility to do the move pretty quick because we have 20 beds in stock. And also we got uh, five or six beds from Cancer Relief Center which is going to be catering for this facility. Now, other than the logistical challenge, the other challenge is maintaining the welfare of those patients, the mental welfare. Everybody's concerned, everybody's stressed, everybody's very worried. Elderly patients, how worried are they? What are their concerns? What do they tell you? I think one of the main worries is they're used to having their families and their relatives come to visit and that's something that we've had to stop, we've been on lockdown to make sure that we keep people as protected as possible. However, we have implemented an iPad system where we're making sure that we can phone, so we're using uh, modern technology of video calling to allow the families and, and the res residents to contact people as much as possible. We give as much reassurance as possible, obviously we're trying to keep the, the staff remain the same so they're familiar with the people that are looking after them normally and, and it's reassuring them that this is a temporary facility um, and, and hopefully things will get back to normal as soon as we can. But what we're doing really is, is you have to look at the individual, everything's about an individual and we tailor what we need to do for that person at that particular time to try and allay any fears that they do have.